life, culture and current events from a biblical perspective. 2020 with Neil Johnson on Vision. Well, after the recent events around the removal of Essendon AFL Football Club CEO, there's been some wide concerns about the precedent set that has the potential to affect Christians in every workplace. In his statement after stepping down, Andrew Thorburn said, Today it became clear to me that my personal Christian faith is not tolerated or permitted in the public square. Well, a conversation today about how these events affect every Christian in the workplace. Andrew Laird works with City Bible Forum in Melbourne and is National Manager of lifeatwork.org.au, an initiative aimed at connecting Christian faith with our daily work. He's also the former Dean of the Marketplace Institute at Ridley College and the author of the book Under Pressure, How the Gospel Helps Us Handle the Pressures of Daily Work. Andrew Laird, a special welcome back to 2020. Thanks, Neil. It's always wonderful to talk to you. Andrew, is it an overreaction to be concerned about those developments that happened and that happened at the Essendon AFL Club? Look, that's a great question, Neil, and I, I certainly have heard that sentiment from from some Christians, and I I can appreciate that. But I do think that there is something about this incident that is different, and as you said in your introduction there, sets a potentially dangerous precedent. And that really is the the guilt by association that we've seen occur here, where Essendon, in the statement that they put out announcing Andrew had uh, resigned as the CEO, they themselves made it very clear that it wasn't based on anything that he himself said. Rather, it was his association or involvement at his local church. You know, in previous occasions where we've seen Christians uh, lose jobs uh, because of their faith, uh, rightly or wrongly, it has been because of things that they have said or done. And and so that's what I think makes this so different and and really does, I think, uh, cause Christians everywhere to feel uh, a degree of concern about what are the implications for them. I will just say, though, it's important, though, that while we want to recognize it does change uh, the game, so to speak, uh, and it's really a line in the sand moment, I believe. Nevertheless, we, we still want to avoid uh, being characterized by fear in our response to it. So it's that balance of recognizing that this is a, this is a game changer, I think, but let's not, um, uh, let's not be, uh, move into that posture of fear and, and defensiveness necessarily. Speaking of being characterised by it, uh, those words being used by political leaders, appalling, intolerant and bigoted, and uh, those are coming from political leaders that perhaps ought to know better, but that's uh, that's what the Victorian Premier has said about the actions or the association, as you're pointing out, of Andrew Thorburn. Mm. And look, I, I think that was a very unhelpful uh, choice of words and very unhelpful involvement from, uh, well, my state premier in, in this instance. And certainly I've heard the, the pastor of the, the church at the centre of all of this, Guy Mason, uh, say, say very similar things, that that's not the kind of divisive language that we need from our leaders uh, at a time like this. And so I can only uh, I can only uh, feel great disappointment uh, at the very least uh, as to how how he handled this. Well, Andrew, this is a very high profile incident uh, with Andrew Thorburn, but you've also pointed out that there's been a whole lot of Christian people who have lost their positions because they've held a faith position uh, in earlier times. Yes, no, absolutely, and we've seen we've seen uh, numerous examples of that in, in Australia and uh, and overseas, and I, I think we can only expect more of that rather than than less if the the current trajectory continues um, in the in the way things are going. This is this is that different one where it's uh, it, it's the association uh, that he has rather than anything himself that he's necessarily said or done. And certainly speaking to a number of Christians in the workplace over the past week or so, um, that it has really um, caused them a degree of concern that they haven't necessarily felt in the past. 
um, with other instances. Because of that sheer fact that it wasn't anything he said or did. Um, and so uh, numerous Christians I've spoken to uh, certainly feel a, a, an unease, a hesitation about what does this mean for the degree to which my faith uh, is welcome in the workplace. So the thought of a dangerous precedent having been set, uh, take us all to work uh, into our own workplace and the thought that the teaching of the church that I belong to uh, might be enough to be f- to have me forced out of my job. This is the reality, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it certainly is, it would seem, based on, uh, on what has occurred in, in this instance. Now, many people say, well, Andrew is a, a high-profile person. He's a CEO. Um, there'll be different standards there than, that, than they would at the, uh, for the ordinary, everyday Christian in, uh, in, uh, in other roles in the workplace. But, but it does, as you say there, it does set a precedent. And I think, I think there's an opportunity for us here, though, to, to point out what is, in my mind, a a contradiction that is going on at the moment in, in our culture. And you can look at this from a few different ways, but as Andrew himself said when, uh, when responding to the news of his, his resignation, he made it very clear that he had felt as though, you know, my personal Christian faith is not tolerated or permitted in the public square. Those were his words. Well, if that is the case, um, then neither should it be the Christian faith that is used then as the measure to, by which to judge a person's capacity in the public square. I, I, think, I think it seems as though um, I want to have a, have a bet both ways, that um, your faith is not welcome, but at the same time your faith will be the thing that we, that we judge you on as to your suitability for a job or not. And that's, I think that's an inconsistency that we would do well to point out. An inconsistency, and uh, others are being a little more severe and calling that an hypocrisy. So how do Mm. we then respond? Uh, So for listeners who are thinking, well, my my workplace has a a diversity and inclusion policy, and I may well be judged according to these things too. So how might we be thinking about responding if we find ourselves in some hot water? Yes, that's a, that's a great question, Neil, and obviously very practical as well, too, um, as that may be the, the reality for people. Uh, look, I think, and it is the case, as you say, a number of workplaces have diversity and inclusion policies. Um, and so I think one thing that Christians can do is come at it from a personal point of view. And so what I have been seeking to say to people is, um, personally, as a Christian, I feel confused. Um, On the one hand, I'm told that to bring my whole self to work, that's a mantra that many workplaces use. We have a diversity and inclusion program. Um, So on the one hand, I'm being told that that, uh, who I am and everything about me is, is welcome. But on the other hand, this situation would lead me to believe that actually certain parts of me are unwelcome, namely my my Christian faith. And so I think just expressing to people, I feel confused as a Christian. Which one is it to be? And I think framing it personally and in that sense of, of I'm, I'm not sure what people expect of me, is, a, is perhaps a, a way of perhaps bringing some heat out of the conversation rather than going on the attack, but making it very clear that there is a, there's, a, there's a contradiction here, there's an inconsistency here, there's, as you say, potentially a hypocrisy here. And I think us having the, the courage to just frame it and raise it in that way could be uh, go a long way to, uh, to drawing it out. Andrew, if we are not personally affected in our own workplace, there might be some others who might be our colleagues at work who find themselves in some sort of difficult situation and and uh, they are judged according to their associations. Uh, how ought I be supporting people that I'm working with if they find themselves uh, as the target in these sorts of situations? Yes, look, that's a very, very important question. I think that the church really needs to uh, consider and uh, and and prepare ourselves for, um, because if it is the case that uh, Christians are potentially lose jobs um, merely because of their involvement at a at a local church, 
then that is going to come at a great cost to, to, to people in a number of ways, not least uh, financially, if they don't have a, an income any further. And so I think if we're, on the one hand, going to be calling people to stand up and uh, be counted as, as a Christian uh, in the world today, then on the other hand, we need to be ready to be uh, helping them if and when that actually costs them. So I think being prepared as a church community to uh, get behind people financially, potentially, uh, if, they, if they lose a source of income because of their faith, um, and get behind people in terms of standing alongside them and being known that I, I stand with them, I am supportive of them, even if that's going to come at a cost to us in terms of our reputation. Um, why would you align yourself with that person? So I think... It's not just uh, the individual uh, who might, needs to be prepared to potentially count the cost, but the church as a whole, as we uh, stand alongside brothers or sisters who might uh, face what, uh, what Andrew Thorburn has faced. Andrew, is there some biblical foundation that we might find an encouragement? Is there biblical wisdom and insight that we might be able to understand as we're contemplating what's happening in our workplace? Yes, look, absolutely, Neil. And um, uh, your listeners would be obviously keenly aware of this. The scriptures say much about uh, opposition um, because of the Christian faith and whether that's verbal opposition or um, physical po- opposition or, or both. And also we'd be keenly aware that, uh, that many Christians uh, in the world this very day uh, face uh, all sorts of threats because of their faith, um, far more serious, facing the, the threat of death itself. Um, and so we, we know that this is a, this is a part of the, the Christian, Christian life. Uh, Jesus promised it effectively uh, when he said, if they, if they persecuted me, they'll persecute you too. So it, it shouldn't surprise us. But the wonderful thing that Scripture does is that so often seeks to encourage us by the example of, of others. And so I think of the words in, uh, in 1 Peter uh, chapter five, where he writes to a to a community of believers who are under under pressure, and he encourages them to stand firm. As he says, you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. He points to the example of of others to draw encouragement from that. Uh, you're not alone. You're not the only one facing this. And I have certainly seen many Christians in the past week uh, feeling precisely that. Um, they've drawn courage, comfort, and from the fact that I'm not the only one. Um, but of course, uh, far more than the, the example of, uh, of other believers, um, ultimately there's the example of, of Jesus Christ. And, and the Apostle Peter points to that, his example as well too, in his first letter at the end of chapter 2 there, where he, where he says, Christ's uh, an example for you um, when you face suffering because of your faith. What did he do? Well, he... Uh, when they hurled insults at him, he didn't retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. And it, Peter says at that point, Christ should be your example. Look to how he responded. He, he didn't retaliate um, in kind for the, to the, to what he was on the receiving end of, but rather he loved his enemies. He prayed for those who persecuted him. And, but ultimately, he also he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. And I think that's something we need to uh, embrace uh, all the more uh, as this uh, opposition seemingly increases towards Christians, that, that God is the judge of all. He sees it all. He sees the, the suffering that we might face because of um, being his people. And we can trust that one day he will bring um, perfect justice, even if it doesn't happen in our lifetime. Andrew, good encouragement and an encouragement that says we ought not be surprised by some of these challenges that might be coming upon us. But there are some ways, biblically and as Christians, followers of Christ, uh, we can respond. Andrew Laird works with City Bible Forum in Melbourne. He's the national manager of the lifeatwork.org.au He's also the author of the book, Under Pressure, How the Gospel Helps Us Handle the Pressures of Daily Work. You can connect with Andrew Laird at citybibleforum.org. 
Andrew, thanks so much for sharing your insights with us today on 2020. Oh, wonderful to join you, Neil. Thank you. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.